Hello there, you beautiful people. Today, I'm going to be playing around with the uh, Proko Skull. And Proko is a uh, YouTuber that uh, does a lot of really pretty neat art videos. And I'm going to I'll link down below to his channel. And uh, he's actually got, a, I think, a suite of channels now. So there's a lot of stuff. But if you're really interested in uh, realistic drawing and realism, uh, he's a great place to, like, one of the good places to start. So, but he produced something called, uh, well, and he, it's the skull. Anyway, um, what's great about it is the detail is pretty is is you know pretty good for a very small uh, you know size skull. Uh, it's got an articulating uh, lower jawbone, a mandible, uh, and uh, actually it'll even come off. So if you wanted to do a half half size thing, I don't know if it'll let's see if we can boop. So contract this, you know, let's see what the working on my. What can be focused, but it, they're magnets. They're little magnets on the end of here, so you can actually keep it uh, pretty, pretty good. So go back to my face. <laughs> um, but uh, so today I'm just going to be playing around with the skull. I think I'm going to try and keep my drying time to a minimum to try and force myself to uh, be more precise with my uh, brush edges and brushes and like where I'm, what like what I'm applying. Um, I have a tendency to. Just want to get, I just get just get stuck in and just mash you know mash things together and play around and that's why I usually use drying time to my advantage so that I don't make too much mud. But we'll see. Uh, today I think I want to go with uh, I like bright colors, so we're gonna we're gonna draw this skull up and then uh, go with some kind of crazy color combinations and uh, I'll talk about those later. Here we go. Let's get stuck in. All right, kind of starting the doodle. Basically just kind of scribbling out, kind of going up and down with my eyes to make sure that I'm fitting the shape in correctly. And uh, it's pretty quick. Not much to do. Just a basic skull. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna play around some colors. I'm gonna use Bob Burridge's uh, color wheel. He's also a YouTuber that you should check out. A lot of, he's he's uh, mostly abstract stuff, but really fun. To, uh, just actually, can play if you play around with his techniques and stuff. It's really fun. But his his uh, goof proof color wheel, which he's got, it's based on the Munsell uh, color system. But it's kind of fun. It's got like tells you where like a dominant color is, and then it's your focal point, and then some spice colors basically to add it up. And what's cool about this is, uh, with this kind of like a really quick. Uh, painting, uh, you can kind of decide, okay, well, what do I want the background color to be? So let's go with, uh, maybe let's play with, uh, uh, let's do a red background. So that's the dominant color, right? And then, so that means the focal point is going to be this kind of bluish teal. And then for spice colors, you've got a purple, blue, and a green. So let's see, uh, play around with it. I think it's, uh, it's honestly, it's one of those th fun things to play with. So uh, let's uh, let's get going. All right, knocking in that red background. I used uh, red with a little bit of uh, Viridian green to make some of the darks. <clears throat> so just kind of putting it in there. I'm trying to keep it to be a little bit. Uh, want my brush brush work to be noticeable. So I'm not really. I don't really want to worry too much about it being a good great, you know, an easy gradient. I kind of want to slop it in there a little bit. And then uh, work on some of mixing up the teal on the side here, which at least I think that's why there's a delay. <laughs> but yeah, so mixed up the teal, which was primary blue, and uh, a little bit of that, uh, I think the lighter greens, like an emerald greens, what they call it for Liquitex. Just to give it a little bit of a kind of bluish green color. Working on the darks, checking my shadows. Kind of some basic, uh, you know, getting some mid tones. Want to get some good solid colors in there. I've mixed in a little bit of ultramarine blue now, and I was thinking that would be more of a more of a purple blue because it's kind of a, a, a warm blue. Probably could have even been more purple. Highlights. Make 
train on my light sources. It's nice though when you can really look up at the skull and see it there. And then this is like a dark. I think at this point I've mixed in a little bit of black with my ultramarine blue. With, with these with these quick paintings, I, I don't mind mixing black in with my darks um, because I'm going to be using line work. But uh, on, on some of my paintings, if I'm not going to use the black lines, I don't really want to mix black with the uh, shadows because it, I think it flat it tends to flatten out the piece. You don't really your blacks are, are like so black that like you can go none blacker. It's like a you know a Spinal Tap album. How black can you get? But if you mix your blacks, you can get much more uh, much. Some much more dynamic. Okay, I decided to let this dry a little bit because I was really starting to make some mud and things were getting a little bit... Yeah, anyway, at least that's how I felt. So, uh, before it gets too smeary and muddy, uh, we'll take a break and have some patience and see what happens. Okay. So after it dried, I made sure that I kind of came in. There were some white areas that I didn't notice right away when I because I was worried too much about it getting kind of smeary and messed up. And mud basically happens when all your colors start to mix together and you're, you're losing your dark values and your light values. Blend out some of these those shadow colors, tones a little bit more. been looking like he's got uh, a little bit of personality. So I'm looking at the, at the Procoscope, what I'm really using is inspiration. So I'm not trying to be super realistic. Now I'm going to start on the blacks. Let's see how this goes. And especially I think when I add in the black tones, you know, to give it more of a, gives it more of a cartoony effect. Started making this pattern on the outside with black, and, and I I liked how it was it was it was looking. So it ended up being pretty cool. Give it kind of a texture, and I, I want to do that too because I want the, the black of this background to kind of tie into the blacks inside the skull, like in the nose and the eyes, the mouth. What's the foreground? What's the background? And Eric just kind of sign it all smeary with love. There you go. All right, finish today's painting. The blue skull on the red background. Pretty fun, you know. I think it turned out pretty good. But uh, lots of fun using the uh, Proco skull. I like how uh, you know it's small. It's easy. Um, and uh, it's really just a great resource and inspiration to use whenever you want to draw a human skull. For whatever reason. You know, Halloween's coming up uh, a couple months. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> it's fun. Monsters and skulls and cartoons. So, uh, anyway, uh, thanks for watching. You know, make sure you smile early and smile often. Give people a reason to smile and you just might get to smile too. So, thanks again. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time, which will hopefully be in the next couple of days. So uh, lots of fun, and uh, take care.